So you two have already worked with each other, so this is technically like a reunion. It must have been easy peasy to work with each other on this one, I'm assuming. I think it was great, but it's also a, you know, a very uh, different type of movie uh, with a lot more physicality, a lot more complexity to the character, uh, you know, a much longer shoot. We had a hell high water. We, we were only working together for about three weeks. I mm -hmm. think it was, you know, it was a very, that was very, very much a kind of coming, mm. coming together. Different beast, a, a joyous experience. I'm delighted uh, with, with uh, what Chris was doing and what, what, what with the film we've ended up, ended up with. It's really good. Now, Chris, you played a Scottish legend in this film. That's a huge responsibility. Yeah, uh, it, uh, yeah. Um, what to say about that? I guess I learned early on. I clearly, you know, he's a character from space. But in Star Trek, I, you know, you can either carry that baggage of the weight of worrying about living up to something, or just say fuck it and, and go in there and and try to do your best. And I felt supported by my. This is an ensemble. If there's a definition of an ensemble, it's this. And I felt hugely supported by my Scottish uh, compadres. And um, um, we tried to make a complex story about a complex man who, more than anything, is a man. He's not Scottish or American or anything. He's a human being in this world who's uh, under the yoke of, a, a, of horrendous tyranny, who tried to do something bigger and better and... and, and Selfless, and that's always a good story to tell. Now, your Scottish accent was brilliant. How on earth did you master that? Um, j uh, I had an incredible dialect coach uh, who uh, just whipped me uh, for months before I started shooting. I, I think I know every Scottish poem by heart now. A um, lot of Bobby Burns, and um, and then obviously just being around the the my Scottish friends on set and the guys that are around me, going to the pubs at night and having a beer and listening and just soaking it in as much as I could, and and uh, you know exploring YouTube and uh, you know that kind of thing. And you guys had to do like a boot camp thing, didn't you? Where you had to learn how to ride horses, you know, whip the swords. What mm. was that like for you? I did. I missed boot camp, but I, I in Los Angeles, I got uh, in touch with an incredible horseman and rode for two months before, uh, which was great fun because I got to explore a bit of my, my hometown on horseback. And then got to, uh, I got to Scotland and worked with a... a um, uh, a horse crew that I'd worked on a couple films previously, so I was already familiar, got to know my fantastic two horses, Fandango and Quentin, who had personalities completely, I mean, their own, they were their own things, and uh, I just had great fun. Yeah, I just had great fun. So you guys have obviously made this brilliant film, but was it quite hard to stick and stay faithful to Scottish history at the same time? It was it we that that was the idea. The idea was to try you know try and sort of reclaim this character from mythology and from from previous interpretations of, you know on, on the sidelines of other movies, uh, and and so we wanted to be as accurate as possible. And and and, and so the costumes, the sets, the 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 the, the mud, and the environments, and everything we possibly could to try and make it as authentic as possible was the, very much the name of the game. While at the same time trying to make it in a, you know big entertaining kind of historical epic movie, and we've been juggling that all. The way through and I feel like we've we've got that. Piece of trivia too, Braveheart is actually the name given to Robert the Bruce and not to William Wallace. Okay. They stole, stole his name. They stole, stole his name. Stolen. Well welcome to London. What do you guys do when you get here? When you when you come here? Work. Well, he's yeah, he's he's been here for ages working. I've been here finishing the film, so it's actually you know it's been, uh, London has been my kind of temporary home for the last uh, last few months. And yeah, it's been uh, been good and great to be in uh, in the festival. And uh, yeah, really happy with the with the screening yesterday. So everyone's talking about this nude scene. What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with you know being nude sometimes in films and movies, is there? No. Well, I mean, we're talking about it, so obviously there you know there, there's something to talk about. Uh, as we've been saying, you know, the, this um, uh, there's incredible brutality and violence in the film, and then there's tender uh, moments with two people making love and, and nudity, and yet no one's really talking about the violence as much as they're talking about a, a scene that lasts all of uh, a second and a half, uh, if that. And uh, I think it's a question to ask ourselves why we're tittering like school children about something that we all... <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> it's separated by not all that much clothing. And, uh, you know, why is that? Sometimes it means an NC-17 rating in my country, 
Whereas you can show people sawing their own heads off and that's like you can show it to a 13 year old. So you wonder why there's a shit ton of violence in the world and you know, I don't know. I agree with you on that yeah. one. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.